All right, I'm really curious. So this this story is amazing. How did you get involved? How did you end up directing this film? When I was approached to do this, I, I I could say yes to it because I had a real emotional connection to to that period um, uh, of of Joy Division because I had moved countries because of Joy Division. You actually photographed Joy Division. Yes, I, I did. You know, I, I moved to England and worked to them. I, I photographed them twice and I did a video for Atmosphere in 1988. How closely involved was Deborah Curtis? And Debbie was one of the um, sources in, in a sense, and the book was a source, and then she could tell us also some quite detailed stuff about how a living room would look like, mm. and all these kind of things, and that Ian didn't want anything on the walls, for instance, which was a bit of a problem, because if you film in this tiny house, to make every shot look a little different, it was quite hard if the walls were almost empty, but anyway, that, that was a given. But of course, for the research for the script, we talked to not only Debbie, but to everybody who thought um, uh, could, could shine some lights on, on any of the situations and that would include Anik, um, which is played by uh, Alexandra. When I read the script the first time, my immediate feeling was, um, um, or I, I thought immediately that this woman was in a very difficult situation and in a not very comfortable position. As an actress, of course, you start loving and protecting the character you play. So um, I try to imagine what it must be like to be um, in love and to be not able. I mean, you don't choose who you are falling in love with. Um, it's fate, it's, it happens to you. And um, Ian Curtis must have been a very fascinating young man, very serious and intelligent and vulnerable and fascinating at the same time and she was a big big music fan and when she met him she fell in love with him but so I thought from the very beginning that must have been very difficult for her too. He reciprocated the love for Anik so they, lo they loved one another so Anik was, had every reason to give her love towards Ian it was a, it was a mutual thing. It's not too hard to separate yourself but uh, but it's intense, and and if you're thinking and if you're sensitive and thinking about this guy and what he went through, then you have a certain empathy, whereby you f you feel like you're feeling some of the same things as him, and a lot of the things I could relate to with him, uh, both his uh, what he wanted to do with his life and and the difficult situations he found himself in. I the most important part of preparation I knew I was going to have to do was the the on-stage uh, mannerisms because I realised that uh, that was key to uh, not upsetting too many of the Joy Division fans and that was just a kind of uh, process of uh, watching watching what little footage there is of theirs uh, a lot. Anton to show me how to do the dance, <laughs> and uh, and uh, I'm watching that again and again, and singing Joy Division songs in the shower instead of Little Richard ones. And I went, I visited the Epileptic Society for a weekend, and uh, and they were very graceful in in letting me uh, watch. It was the biggest and best opportunity I'd ever been offered in my life. That I wasn't really. I was quite frustrated in my uh, personal life at home. My career previously and wasn't going anywhere. And I loved every morning being picked up and taken to work on this movie with, with these people. And, uh, and being Ian and singing and, 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 and all that, I absolutely loved it. There were times where it, it, it's, it's more difficult or more, or more painful because it's a painful subject. But, but uh, when I met New Order before we, uh, before we started filming, Bernard Sumner, the only advice New Order gave us was have fun. And, uh, and I did.